So the last uh, device related kind of a topic that I want to talk about before getting into diode circuits is called reverse, reverse breakdown. So we said that when I have a diode in equilibrium, I have this depletion region. And then if I apply reverse bias, the depletion region gets wider and wider, right? But then we also said that nothing interesting about the current and voltages happen. It's just that we have a capacitance that becomes, well, a different capacitance. I'm changing the capacitance. That's all that is happening. In reality, something actually does happen when we apply a lot of reverse voltage across the diode. Um, like everything else, when you increase the any any other material, any other isolating material that is not conductive of current, if you apply enough voltage across it, it's going to break down, right? What do I mean by breaking down? It means that, well, it's not going to be an insulator anymore. It's, there's going to be some current flowing through it. A very common example for this, this breakdown kind of uh, uh, phenomenon is lightning, um, in which case the electric field in the air reaches such a high level uh, to ionize the oxygen molecules. Uh, therefore, it will lower the resistance of the air and it creates a tremendous current from the clouds to the ground. And that's what we call it, well, a disaster, right? So we're going to have this, we have seen this kind of a breakdown in different kinds of materials and we have this breakdown in diodes as well when we reverse bias them. Uh, the thing is that it happens, for, for diodes, it happens due to different mechanisms. The first one is called the Zener mechanism. And the second one is called the or Zener breakdown. And the second one is called avalanche breakdown. OK, so we're just going to uh, briefly talk about these two types of breakdown. So for the Zener, the idea is that, well, you're applying a huge electric field across this PN junction and um, more specifically across the uh, the depletion region of the PN junction. Right. So the more and more voltage I'm going to have here. So you can see that the current voltage uh, relationship uh, on the forward bias side, everything is uh, as good uh, as usual, nothing different. On the reverse side, you can see that when the voltage is negative up to a certain point, oh, somehow this became yellow, uh, up to a certain point, I have the same negative IS that I always have, right? But once we reach some voltage called V breakdown or VBD, uh, which is different for diode to diode and it's always mentioned in a diode's data sheet or like basically if you're doing integrated circuits the, the fabrication foundry will let you know what is the breakdown voltage once you get to the breakdown voltage what happens is that you're going to have a li literally a breakdown and you're going to have an enormous amount of current flowing through your diode in the reverse direction see like when you have a forward bias the if this is the diode when you have a forward bias your current is in this direction but then when a breakdown happens you have a current in this direction and it's not a useful current it's not something that you like it's it's well it, the name kind of implies a disaster right it's a breakdown so it's a current that you can see that at that point at that voltage you're going to have a lot of current and you have literally no control on it so you don't even know if it's a, a few milliamps or a few hundreds of milliamps or even more than that so it's at that point your device is actually broken down so it's not a useful region of operation uh, it's something that we have to make sure that we avoid it right going back to the Zener and avalanche mechanisms uh, so once you apply this big voltage across this pn junction in a reverse bias kind of a form uh, what happens is that i'm going to have an enormous electric field across the uh, depletion region so um, the electric field, what happens is that after a certain time, the electric field becomes so powerful that it's going to uh, basically apply enough energy to the remaining covalent electrons in the depletion region to tear them apart from their bond. So we know that it's depleted region, so we don't have any free electrons here or here, but they still do have atoms and ions, right? those ions are going to have some electrons in them and those electrons are actually pretty much fixed to the atom because of the covalent bonds, right? But if I, if I increase, if the voltage across this depletion region becomes higher and higher, becomes so high that uh, the electric field is so powerful that can actually break down these covalent bonds, suddenly I'm going to have a lot of electrons that are released from the atoms, right? And the moment that these electrons are freed from their atoms and from their nucleus, uh, well, 
there's a there's an electric field this way so all of these electrons are going to be um, quick forced to go to the end side right and electrons moving to the end side it means that the current is going from n to p side right so that's why i'm going to have a huge amount of current going from the n side to the p side uh, for to, to have such an electric field to get an idea about like basically uh, how big of an electric field we're talking about it the electric field should be in the order of 10 to the power of 6 volts per meter so a million volts per meter, which is, it sounds pretty high. And you're thinking, you might think that, well, the voltage should be really, really high to actually have that. But then remember, uh, the junction, the equi equilibrium, or, sorry, the depletion region width is not a meter. It's actually in the order of micrometers, right? So this is really in the order of one volt per micrometer. And that's very much uh, kind of, that's something that we can completely assume uh, completely imagine that might happen right a negative one volt is something that definitely might happen in a reverse bias so uh, it's not going to be one volt exactly because this is not exactly one micrometer right but then imagine if the um, if the width of the depletion region is like five micrometer it only takes five volts in the reverse bias to actually break down this uh, pn junction uh, for good or for bad let's say um, the other mechanism which happens when your doping levels are actually pretty low is that um, remember that like basically when we are in equilibrium none of the basically uh, th there's no current happening or when we are reverse biased there's no current happening uh, from basically p to n or n to p side right well we know that there is a little bit of current that is happening right we said that there's no current but then in reality we have this little is right there's a little bit of reverse current that is happening so even though the leakage current is very small each carrier that is entering the depletion region experiences when when the voltage is actually pretty high when we reach this breakdown voltage each carrier uh, experiences uh, a very high electric field as a result of that um, it's going to be accelerated really quickly and really heavily so it's going to gain a lot of energy and then what happens is that it, it it is so high energy that when it hits the other electrons that are bonded to other atoms it's going to actually break them loose and it's going to break their basically it's going to break their covalent bonds this kind of uh and it's going to basically ionize the the entire depletion region even more it's called in the, the, this process is called impact ionization so what happens is that you have a very high speed electron because of the uh, because of the high or enormous electric field that we have and this electron is going to be speed up uh, so high and so fastly that when it hits another kind of a covalent bond and it, another electron it's going to make that make that electron free and then that electron that just became free is also inside this enormous electric field so it even that electron is going to speed up and that is going to break loose some more electrons from their covalent bonds so you can imagine that one electron reaches basically results in a few and a few results in several and several results in many right so we have something that well we have seen it in nature which looks like an avalanche right you start you start small and then things accelerate pretty quickly that's why we call this an avalanche breakdown. So both of these could happen to, um, to diodes and depending on basically uh, what is the doping level and what is the material that we're using and so many other things, this breakdown voltage might uh, change. And then depending on the doping level, if it's a high doping level, Zener breakdown might happen sooner. And if it's a low doping uh, avalanche, is more likely to happen but the the main lesson that we we need to learn from here is that uh, whenever you have a huge voltage across the diode in a reverse bias mode you're going to have a breakdown one way or the other uh, we have two different phenomena but you're going to have a breakdown and that's not good so we have to make sure that when we are reverse biasing the uh, the diode we are sure that it's in the range that it's not going to break it down